Hi you guys! Today I'm going to be filming my transformation video, heart to heart, coming to you from my living room through my digital camera. So let's get started. We're going to start from my earliest background with eating disorders and I'll make it very brief but when I was in middle school that is probably when I first realized that I had eating disorder habits. When I was in seventh grade I had to get braces. My teeth did not always look like this. They used to be in an A shape, meaning that... <laughs> that sounds... I mean, just imagine. Your teeth are normally, you know, a U shape, and mine was unfortunately like a V shape. I went to like a really old school dentist firm, and this guy like tortured me. I swear to you, he would stick like a thick blue thread underneath my gum to get the bracket on, because I guess there was something wrong with my gum. I'm not sure. And I had something called the expander. If you don't know what it is, look it up. It's a torture device. My mom used to have to go in with this little metal key and like crank it and it gave me this massive gap in my teeth that, I don't know. Anyway, I know a lot of this sounds very irrelevant, but it is relevant because this is what triggered everything. Because I would leave there and my mouth would be in so much pain. It wasn't like when you get your braces tightened. It was like beyond that. I mean, if I, I would have rather had my braces tightened every week than leave there with bloody gum and swollen cheeks and all of that from this pain. Point blank, that's what started it. I couldn't eat, I wouldn't eat for like two weeks at a time. I would basically just live off of Jamba Juice smoothies or some sort of like protein based drink at the time. I, I think I was drinking like Insures and just, you know, something to give me some nutrients, but that was a shake. And it gave me a really unhealthy relationship with food. I started to realize I was losing weight and I was looking thinner. And I got, unfortunately, really, really comfortable with that. I'll see if I can enter some pictures somewhere in here. And if I am, they're somewhere around here. But I basically, I don't remember what I was at in a healthy weight. I want to say I weighed like 105 and I ended up dropping down to around 80 to 85 pounds, give or take, and this went on for about a year. I actually saw one of my friends today and I was like, remind me of what it was like in middle school because I've honestly blacked out and she told me that I would try and split Quaker oatmeal packets with her, like half of it, and I would take a few bites and then she would end up eating everything. The things that I lived off of was Reese's and Jones, Jones like soda drinks, and that is like pretty much it. I just like ate junk food and it was, even that was so minimal. That is just like a brief overview of when my eating disorder first started. Now fast forward, I was living at a very healthy weight for quite some time. For me, my like healthiest weight when I wasn't lifting or anything was about 100 to 105 pounds. I was little, but it didn't look unhealthy. I, you know, was filled out in all the right places. I was actually pretty happy with my body during that time. And then unfortunately, I haven't talked too much about it on this channel and it's probably going to be a while before like I go into full depth about it all. But I had lost my mom to illness and my mom was the only person I had during that time. I lived with her. It was her and I at home, you know. I mean, I had people, don't get me wrong, like I had family I had my older brother and totally had family and people that were, you know, looking out for us. But in the big picture, you know, it was her and I at home. But as many of you can imagine, it was a very devastating thing to go through in my life. And I had a very rough period with, you know, depression. And when the depression came, that is when the body weight started to drop significantly too. I wasn't really eating very much anymore. I wouldn't say like, you know, I just lost weight in like a month. But progressively, I mean, over the span of a year, I had dropped probably 15 to 20 pounds because again my low ended up being 89 pounds. That was absolutely awful. So a time period for this, that first eating disorder was in middle school. 17 years old was when my mom passed away. In between 18 and 19 years old is when I hit my low of 89 pounds. People told me, I remember my teachers, my family, my friends, everybody around me, they always said like, you look so skinny, what's going on? Your face looks sunken in. I just remember people constantly hounding me and I can truly say at that time that I actually didn't see anything wrong with my body and that was really, really scary. To close off that 
part of my life, what the problem had become, and I've mentioned this probably in one of my first or second videos, is that it wasn't necessarily an eating disorder. I didn't look at myself and think, oh my god, I'm ginormous, like I feel fat, you know, it was nothing like that. If anything, I remember getting into a bikini for the first time and turning to my friend who's always been, you know, really like a skinny girl, she's ballet and track runner, and I turned to her and I was like, oh my god, like I kind of look like you. I'm nice and skinny, I'm excited to go out and I feel like I have a nice flat tummy me and my legs aren't spilling out of the bikini pants. I remember feeling happy again with this new thin body and it wasn't until I started to lose my period and my doctor was telling me that I was eventually going to completely destroy the chances of having a baby one day that I was like, okay, there could be something wrong here. My metabolism was getting destroyed. I was constantly fatigued. If I went on the treadmill for more than 15 minutes, my blood sugar would completely drop and it would cause me to basically pass out. Things would turn different colors. I could hear my heart beating in my ears. I could literally feel like my blood flowing through my veins. and. They call that, it's the opposite of diabetes, what is it, hypoglycemia. So I basically got hypoglycemia merely due to being extremely underweight. It was terrible, I was scared to go on a treadmill and walk because I didn't know if I was going to accidentally pass out. Never got to the point where I would pass out, but the stomach pain and the, the like images, it was just, it was really creepy and it was really scary, but it was my body basically getting ready to pass out and shut down. What that actually was, instead of an eating disorder, was kind of like a, a mental OCD sort of disorder where because I was in a phase where I felt like I didn't have any control over my life because after my mom passed away, everything changed. It's not like I just moved in with my dad. I, my dad's not a part of my life. It was a transition to moving in with one of my best friend's family and then moving in with my aunt. And as blessed as I am to have not been put on the streets or put into foster care, it's still a very painful situation. And so I guess subconsciously the way that I was controlling all of that was by restricting myself of eating. and. It wasn't even on purpose. That's the scary part is no part of it was on purpose. I was just like, no, I'm not hungry. No, I don't need to eat. Oh, we're going out to eat? Yeah, I'll just take a couple bites. And so I could see now looking back that it was a very unhealthy relationship with food and that it was all a very subconscious, you know, thing that I had going on. But at the time, you know, when you're in that state of mind, it's very, very difficult to, to see the light, I guess. Now we're going to move into my binging. So it was a very short period of time, it was probably for about six months I was binge eating. So I went from 89 pounds to 120 pounds. So I gained 30 pounds in a matter of realistically like two or three months. and. I was happy, oh my god, I was so happy. I, I was not happy that I put on 30 pounds because, bear in mind it was 30 pounds of fat, but I was happy that I put on weight. My body was like thirsty for all of these things that I had not been eating. I had moved back home after living in San Diego for a couple months and I just ate everything in sight. I'm telling you, like, I woke up and literally ate cookies. Like, that would be my breakfast. And I remember my aunt was like, dude, you're disgusting. Like, what are you doing? I would wake up and eat Lucky Charms, cookies, ice cream, candy bars. I mean, it was ridiculous. And I was totally happy. Like, I was like, oh, you could judge me if you want, but <laughs> it's Lucky Charms. What do you want me to do? Say no? Like, come on, really? I just went balls to the wall, I was eating anything and everything in sight. I think I started eating fast food again during that time. I don't eat fast food anymore except for like in and out but I don't touch McDonald's or Taco Bell or anything like that. And as unhappy as I was with my body during that time because I was just kind of like swollen and my face was really round and I was really bloated, I don't regret that period because it kind of gave me a taste of both worlds. So we've gone from eating disorder to mental eating disorder to binging and now we're moving into clean eating. I had come across a friend who I went to beauty school with and she's kind of the one who got me into all of this. Got me into fitness, got me into lifting. She had posted a picture of her abs one day and I was like, girl, tell me how you got them things because I need them. And like I've mentioned before, I had previously lifted but never where I took it seriously. And so she kind of got me back into the swing of things and then she's like, hey, you should consider doing bikini competitions and I'm like, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. She told me more about it and I was like, I am so down. So I started with the coach who I will not name, but he basically gave me a cookie cutter diet, which a lot of people hear about in the industry when they first get into it. A cookie cutter diet, from my experience and my knowledge, is basically where somebody gives you 
a meal plan of six, six meals throughout the day. And usually what it's going to be is meal one is going to be some egg whites and veggies. Meal two is going to be chicken and rice or protein shake. Meal three is going to be chicken and broccoli. Meal four is going to be protein shake or chicken and broccoli. Like it's just basically the exact same thing all day long. You're allowed to have vegetables all day long and no carbs after six and no sodium, no extra seasonings, no sauces. I was only allowed to have two pieces of sugar-free gum each day. I can say that I did enjoy it at first. Like I was like, oh wow, look at me, I'm all clean eating and stuff. But then I was like, hmm, I really, really miss having cereal. And what started happening is that on my cheat meal days, it started off fine where I was like, oh, it's a cheat meal day. I'll have a bagel and cream cheese and a bag of chips and a Gatorade. And that would be my cheat meal. But then as I got further and further into this lifestyle, I did it for about four months, I realized that I was eating terribly. There was one day <laughs> where I went to Little Caesars and I ordered a $5 pizza and the crazy bread and a liter of Mountain Dew and I destroyed the pizza, I destroyed the crazy bread and I drank like half of the Mountain Dew. You guys, that basically just took away from all of the work that I had done that week. And I'm not saying that what I did was right and not saying that this is how other clean eaters do it. I'm not saying it is what you should do, but that's what I started to do and that's when I was like, I'm starting to think that maybe this lifestyle is not for me because I'm starting to create an extremely unhealthy relationship with food. I will say I noticed immediate changes in my body. Like my stomach was like already starting to tighten up within two weeks and you know I was just in general looking leaner and leaner as the weeks went on. Yes, clean eating works and that's why you'll never hear me say like don't do clean eating. If you like eating that way and you can do well eating that way, it does give you results but personally it just doesn't work for me. It led me straight into a yo-yo diet which is what I'm gonna get into next. I don't even know what I'm gonna title this video. How am I gonna tell you guys all of the dieting transitions I've been through? Once I left this guy, I stopped lifting, I stopped eating clean and all that for another six months. I went kind of back into binge eating again. My body felt so neglected after not getting to eat all of that junk food that when I was free again, I was like, freedom of last, order me all the bad food, I'm ready to do this, let's go, it's go time. That was for a very short period of time, but I did end up getting back up to about 120 pounds. And then lastly is flexible dieting. The savior of all of my problems, honestly. After going through all of these things, I had a friend who had told me, you know, if you ever want to learn about flexible dieting, let me know. I'm more than happy to explain it to you and we could just meet up and talk. And I had finally reached out to him. He explained to me my proteins, fats, and carbs. He explained to me a surplus deficit and what your maintenance calories are. After doing more research and stuff, I was also able to find out more about micronutrients and fiber and, and making sure that you're hitting all of those extra things within your calories to make sure that you're also leading a healthier lifestyle as well and not neglecting your body of all of its essential micronutrients. Now we're here. I am now roughly between 114 to 116 pounds. It varies day to day. I lift about five times a week. I do cardio five days a week for about 200 calories and this is probably the healthiest I'll ever be in my entire life. My body is still undergoing a massive body recomposition where I am making gains but burning fat at the same time. I call them newbie gains. It's just total newbie gains that are commencing right now and my body's like, whoa, you know, you are pushing heavy weight but you're eating all this stuff but Ah, uh, okay, we're just gonna, we're, you know what? We're just gonna go into overdrive. We're just gonna make things happen. It's a miracle. This right now is the happiest I've ever been with my body in my entire life. Like, because I look at myself and I, I see the muscle development that I want to be seeing happening. My stomach is still relatively flat. I'm, you know, obviously doing my cut right now for my birthday and for the summer, but I'm happy with my body. I don't wake up in the morning and just look at myself and feel disgusted like, I had felt so many times on and off throughout, you know, the last few years of my life. So now I'm here, you know, I'm in this flexible dieting lifestyle and honestly it's gotten to a point where I don't imagine ever <laughs> living a life where I don't track my macros to some degree. And I hope that you guys are able to relate to me more and see that this has been a journey for myself as well. It took me a long time to get to a point where I could look at myself and feel completely beautiful in the skin that I was in. Like I said, it's it's been a long time since 
I've really felt that. It's a journey, but when you push through it and you start getting to your end result, it's like the best feeling ever. I really hope that this is something that can inspire some of you girls and guys out there to just get started on a healthier lifestyle. No matter what lifestyle it is, whether it's flexible dieting, intuitive eating, clean eating, whatever you decide to do, if you're making a healthy change for yourself, that's all that really matters. I will say flexible dieting is kind of better, in my opinion, honestly, just saying. But no matter what, if you're trying to find a way to better yourself, that's all that really matters. Keep pushing, keep going through the motions. You will get results, you just have to be patient. The first two weeks are gonna be the hardest. In three months, you might be like, I really hate this, I wanna stop. Don't stop, keep going. Keep going. Maximize your potential. Show people what you're capable of just by transforming your physique. I'll reference a couple If It Fits Your Macro link websites below. That way you guys can at least start to educate yourself. That way you guys can at least start to educate yourself. I am soon going to be offering online coaching. Fortunately, I was going to start sooner, but it's probably not going to be for another couple months. I really need to focus on some other things beforehand before I can even consider taking you all as clients. As always, you guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, MyFitnessPal. All that stuff is linked below. You guys are starting to add me on Facebook now too. Go ahead. I don't really post much on there, but I do respond to you guys if you message me and stuff. So feel free to do that. That's all I have for you guys today. Expect your next video on Saturday and I'll see you guys then. Peace.